That would have been in 1957. I had been at the university in the School of Engineering. Everybody was going into engineering. So I graduated from high school, registered in the engineering school, found out I wasn't measuring up. I just wasn't good at it. So I then went on a mission for the LDS Church. When I came back, I thought about it and talked about it and decided I would like to be an architect. Why? Because uh, I was right next to the art school and the architecture program at the U had started only a few years before. I was uh, taking watercolor classes because I liked it. Some of these guys around here are mine, some of them aren't. I'd go over there and there'd be these drawings of architects. And, you know, I'd walk away and I'd, my heart would be beating and I'd think, boy, that looks great. So I registered in the architecture school and I graduated in 1963. And then Roger had been encouraging me to go to graduate school so I went to the University of Minnesota. It was a great time in my life. I had gotten married. My wife and I had two children when we went back to Minneapolis. And a guy had been in Europe and he was just so excited about what he'd seen. On top of that, I had been interested in Gothic cathedrals. I wondered how in the hell did they get built? And uh, so my wife and I decided that we would take our two kids and go to Europe. I got a job in a small town in the French Alps. It was a good firm. The owner of the firm, the, the real chief guy, there were three of them. The guy that was the right architect was Pierre Germain. Pierre Germain made it possible for me to work on a design for a Catholic chapel in the Alps for the Olympics. The firm was just right for me and I was just right for the firm and uh, uh, that's where I got started. It got kicked off with that project. Then uh, we came back and I'd been friends with Bob Fowler. Mm -hmm. For a long time, just friends. And uh, we were both competing for Symphony Hall. Well, Bob got it, as you know. So uh, I wrote a letter to Bob and I said, you know, I really feel crummy. I wanted that job, but if I can't have it, I want you to have it. And that cemented a relationship. Well, a couple of weeks later, he called me and said, why don't you come over? Let's talk about Symphony Hall. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he said, I would like you to be my design consultant because it had to be done in a short period of time. And I think Bob believed in me like I, I certainly believed in him. And so I worked side by side with Bob. He was the architect. I was his design consultant. So we started uh, on Symphony Hall. Um, it was a pressure. It was enormous pressure on it because it had to be done by a certain date. But you know, sometimes pressure helps you in the decision-making process and your brain works better because you can't sit around and dream about things. You've got to get stuff done. Without Bob, it would never have happened. Uh, it wouldn't have been the same without me, but I, I had no political uh, weight. Bob had plenty of political weight, so he and I would work at the office and then he would take the drawings over to the committee and sell the committee and then in all this time we were just having a great time it was wonderful i think we had a good result that's the story of how pardon me how i got started i should say 
that I had a firm before FFKR, Entelechy, oh, yes. Ray Kingston, Jack Smith, myself, and a guy named John Perkins. So when we got started with Bob, Ray and I were in Telekey, and in Telekey and Robert A. Fowler Associates became FFKR, and we never looked back. We just kept going. We were a studio. In a studio, you have a certain amount of freedom, and the studio allows you to allow, to allows ideas to bubble up from below. It doesn't matter who they come from, it's the best idea. And when a new project would come in the office, uh, we would assign it to one of us, and we just worked together, and we had very good people in the office and we were careful that we worked hard every day and efficiently and we, we were able to make our payroll. But as far as a, you, you couldn't draw a corporate structure of either IntelliKey or FFKR. And uh, that's just, that it was a very artistic environment, I think. And I liked it a lot. That's how we did it. We uh, were able to lift uh, master planning out of a morass because of Jack Smith. Jack came from the East. He had sophistication that I didn't have, and he undertook uh, the planning, master planning of Snowbird. Oh. And uh, it's been published a number of times, it has, yes. and it isn't a Swiss village. I think we put master planning on a different uh, plane. All we did was try to put modern architecture in a good light. We were all trained as modernists. Mm -hmm. I don't think an architect can be everything to everybody. I think you have to focus on what it is you believe in and what you want to do. Well, it, as it turned out, I was trained as a modernist. I know a lot about the Bauhaus. I believe in Bauhaus principles. I put them to work in my buildings. And um, I've had some wonderful opportunities to put those ideas into play. So there's Symphony Hall, which was really wonderful. Uh, Delta Center, projects at BYU, and the Jerusalem Center. Mm. And that was really wonderful. It took 10 years to get that done. And I'm on the phone in the middle of the night talking to my Jewish partner in Jerusalem, who was terrific. He was really wonderful. Without him, it wouldn't have gotten done. Modern architecture can today can be horrible and can be great. And it's both. And if you look at Renzo Piano and his work, it's great. Never been better architecture than that. If you look at some of this other stuff that you can see everywhere, it's junk. And uh, I, I don't feel good about it, and I think, I think it's because people don't draw anymore. Now, that's a very naive opinion, but drawing helps you think. And if you're sitting in front of a screen and you're poking buttons and the button does everything for you, I, I think your brain, brain tends to shrink a little bit. By the way, everything I'm telling you came before computers. I had a pencil and a hand, and every every project on there was done with a pencil and a hand, and no no computer assisted design and so on, which I recognize is a great thing, but I predated that, and I honestly don't know how I would have done had there been more computerization of work. On the other hand, there are some really great buildings. 
being built right now by people who depend on computers to do their work. I don't know how they do it. I couldn't. I was too, far too uh, uh, biased towards working with this guy. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, the best building in Utah is the Capitol. Richard Cletting, geez, he did a great job. I just, I just think that's the best, period. To go into a building and know where you are and to feel good is at the heart of it. And if you can't do that, uh, and there are buildings <laughs> where you can't do that, um, I think you've missed the point. The other thing is um, energy has become important, but it's not everything. I mean, you can't tell people to feel good because the energy bills are low. So I think natural light and the play of light across surfaces, you know, uh, a white, as you can see, I like it. It's never white. It's always close. And uh, I think that's important. Most of my buildings, if you look at these here, most of them are transparent in one way or another. Get out of town. My, my exit from Salt Lake City to the Midwest, to Europe, to San Francisco, to California. Jeez, what a difference it made. You're just not gonna cut it here. You're not gonna get the opportunities that you deserve. So I would say, get out of town somehow. <laughs>